Hello, hello, church, and all guests. Welcome to Spring of Life Church. Hi, guys. I don't know what to say. Peace be to you. Okay, nothing works. So I'll try something new today. So if it was yesterday, worship night, I made you like habit for myself. And uh, uh, more often, if you go to Russian service sometimes, so you know I have this uh, tradition to say, like to greet people with this phrase, peace be to you. And it's not just good tradition, it's uh, Jesus' command. He said, greet each other with these words. And I think at this very like crazy time, we need to remind each other that we have peace in Jesus Christ. Amen? So, but also, I think we need to remind each other uh, something else. So, uh, as I said, I made a new habit, uh, uh, like now on, every time I will preach, I will just remind you guys, as your pastor, I love you. Okay. <laughs> it, you will make to, used to it, okay? So, I love you, and it's, for me, it's a big uh, joy to be with you. By the way, I discovered a new kind of drink for me, like in coffee shop, so after the service, st stop by. Honestly, I never tried uh, uh, like Italian soda before. I don't know why, but, but it's so cool. Especially this apple taste. Uh, by the way, if it's your first time in our church, you can enjoy free uh, cup of coffee or like just free drink. It's like just special welcome to you. We're glad that you joined us today to worship God and to be like uh, to devote uh, in, uh, in, uh, in God's word. And, but before I will start preach, I just want to make a few announcements, and I think it's very important for us to know. It will be about uh, church life and how we uh, involved in this, uh, this crazy world right now uh, during this uh, war in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine. And now it's not just Russia and Ukraine. It's like pretty much entire ho whole world involved in this war in different ways. So uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for all of you who uh, made your offerings uh, for Ukraine to support people in Ukraine or from Ukraine. Like besides church uh, budget, we already collect more than $80,000. So thank you so much. Praise God. Uh, it's good money and thank you for your participation. Like it's still it's not enough. You can continue to uh, give offerings to support people from Ukraine, to support ministry, to support people who need food, uh, just uh, stuff to go through this uh, crazy time. Uh, but I also, if you was participating with the, uh, like to giving uh, to these people through the church stuff like clothes, like uh, I don't know, uh, food or something else. Uh, yesterday we. Like some people came and they just like packed all this stuff in boxes. Thank you so much if you was there and helped. You were there and helped. So we're done with this thing. And, you know, I just remember how Moses said. So uh, when they were in the desert, he asked people to give offerings with different stuff to build a tabernacle. And at one moment he said, please stop. We have more than enough. So this is something uh, I have pleasure to say. Uh, guys, please stop. For now, we have more than enough. So we are not able to send everything you already donated. Thank you so much. It's just logistics, uh, some, you know, like difficulties. But uh, stay, uh, 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 like, stay tuned. Uh, we will uh, announce next time when we, uh, when we uh, need you to help with things to help people. Uh, I don't know if you heard about, but a few days ago, our president, uh, Biden, he uh, like announced that the uh, United States are uh, ready to accept 100,000 uh, refugees from Ukraine. So it calls uh, like a humanitarian password, as I know. So uh, uh, United States are ready to accept 100,000 people from Ukraine and uh, people already start coming but the only way they can come or through the uh, how it goes Posolstva. embassy thank you through the embassy and it's very hard because uh, like there's lines months in advance uh, other way they can fly to Canada or to Mexico and just walk through the uh, border and they uh, and the, like custom gave this give this password and they free to go in this country, wherever they want. It usually it works like this, okay, here's your passport. There's airport, there's like train, there's food and hotel, like go wherever you want. 
And it, you know, it's very hard for people who are desperate, who like uh, have this sorrow and like know nothing, even language, they need a lot of help. And uh, it's so sad to hear sometimes that there is like evil people. Uh, there's one example I heard a few days ago, uh, one family, uh, well, like parents and two or three kids, I don't remember, they arrived to Tijuana. Uh, this is the border people go through. Uh, to uh, uh, to come to the United States. In the airport of Tijuana, one guy, I don't know, like Slavic guy, he asked $4,000 from people, like this family, just to show you need to stay in this line. Like crazy. Like I hope God will punish for this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but guys, it's not good. It's not good when like people suffer and somebody use this for their own benefits. And that's why right now there's a, a, that border, we have a lot of Christians, brothers and sisters, they're serving, they, uh, they uh, meet people from airport, they deliver them to the border, show them what they need to do, where they need to stay, and uh, at our side of the border, they again like meet them and help them to go to a hospital or to a hotel or to airport or just like give them something they need. And people there, uh, we already talked to them, they just like exhaust because five days in a row, like pretty much without, non-stop, they're helping people. And they need more people. So I don't know if you work for yourself or there is some days you can take off from your work. I beg you, please, use this opportunity to go to San Diego to help people to help them to uh, cross the board, to be here and help them to establish. I don't know, uh, families may be here because people from there go to like different states. If you have rooms, I don't know, available home or wherever you have, just like stay for people, for family, for just a couple. I don't know how many beds you have uh, for one week, for two weeks, for a few months. I don't know, just let us know, please. People need help. And God says you need to help your brothers and sisters. You need to help people who suffer. So let's participate in this. It's very important for us because God said now it's time of salvation. And these people need salvation. They need somebody who will share God's love with them. Amen. So take it personal. Fly to San Diego. I'll give you all contacts. They will teach you what to do. And you will be able, like in a few minutes, you will be able to help people to change their lives. Also, I, I don't know if you remember, uh, two weeks or a week ago I said that probably we'll go to Poland. Uh, we go to Poland, but tomorrow. And they, who was uh, yesterday on worship night, he already announced, and we prayed for me, me and Pastor Sergei and Nikolai uh, Serdyuk and Yura Senchenko. Four of us, we go to Poland just for a week to uh, to create base, or I don't know how to say, like to establish this process, how we can fly there and how we can help people there. So the idea is to to make to build connections with the local churches because we don't believe in the ministry outside of the church or beside church. We believe in the ministry through the local church. This is our idea. This is our DNA. We work through churches because people need to come to the church. Because it doesn't help when you, like, uh, for example, on a train station, you talk to people. Even he, repent, uh, he or she repented, but then you fly back to the United States. What with this person? You need to help them. You need to connect them with the local church. So we fly to make these connections, to build this database of all churches who is ready to support, who is ready to help, and who need this help from us. And uh, by the way, in a week, Sergei Titorchuk, our other pastor, he fly to Germany. Because who knows, Rudy Duke is one of... Uh, like good guys who helped a lot of uh, a lot of to our church he called me and said paul we have everything we have money we have facility we have staff to help we have everything but we don't have people who speak russian or ukrainian in my church just me and my associate pastor we speak russian and we like exhaust we're tired to speak russian because nobody else speaks we need people who will speak russian or ukrainian who will pray with them who will preach who will take care of their kids like we have everything but we need people so in a week right easter week like on the easter week i think one of the best uh ways to spend easter to celebrate easter 
is to serve somebody, to share crucified and resurrected Jesus Christ with somebody who needs this. Amen? So think about, pray about, and you can go with Sergei Titarchuk. We don't need big a team, maybe eight, ten people, but still pray and think. And later, in May, after Easter, we will have more trips. So think and pray if you can, if you want to go, but cannot, you can support. So just let's participate. Okay, this is all with my announcements for today. Just want you to know who we are as the church and how we can be involved in this world, how we can as a church help people, how we can be the light and the salt for people around us who suffer. Okay, we continue, no matter what, we continue to devote in uh, Ephesians with the Apostle Paul. And if you remember, in the first three and a half chapters, Paul describes what God done, what he did through Jesus Christ to establish the church. He blessed us, he saved us, he resurrected us, he gave us something, he gave mercy, he gave grace, he gave gifts, he put us in the church, he destroyed sin, he, or he reconciled us with each other, he reconciled us with God, he done, did everything to build the church. Because church is the place only, the place God's mercy and grace can be known to this world. Only church. Is the place where people can find love, mercy, and grace, forgiveness, acceptance, and everything this world lack. And God done everything. Jesus Christ died to establish the church. And in chapter 4, Paul starts to explain what is our role in this process. From his side, God established everything, and now he put us in the church for a purpose. And he expects that our behavior will continue to, uh, to give this growth to the church. Our behavior, our lifestyle will spread the gospel, spread the kingdom of God through the whole world. And right now we in the chapter 5. So before we talked last time in the uh, uh, sermon before, we talked about who is this guy, like new creation. In Jesus Christ, who we are as a new creation. And we were talking about that, uh, just like I want to mention beginning of chapter 5, that we need to imitate Pastor Igor, uh, like we talked with him, he talked with us, like we need to imitate God. And what does it mean to imitate God? It means like be follower of God. It means to love like Jesus loves us. It means to be clean like with your body, with your uh, conscience, with your lifestyle, and be free from greed. One of the biggest uh, reasons of all kind of sins is, is, is greed. The root of all evil is love to money, right? This is the root of all evil. So he said we need like to be followed, to imitate God, it means to be free, to be clean. Even our speech is supposed to be clean. Uh, it to be, it's supposed to build up, not destroy. And also we need to separate ourselves from everything unclean. Continue talking about this, there was topic about light. Paul used this uh, idea or this parable of light to explain that we are the children of God. We are not darkness but we are the light and uh, there is uh, some uh, 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 results or there is some fruits of this light life that? Uh, yes it, like uh, fruits of the spirit it's uh, verse 9 uh, then he talks about that the light shows what is good for God what is accepted uh, acceptable in God's eyes uh, light reveals this, uh, also light reveals the darkness. But what is good about light, it's not just reveals what is bad, what is wrong. He transforms what is wrong. Everywhere light comes in or to, it's not just so, ah, oh, you're a bad person. No, the power of light transforms the situation. Power of light is supposed to transform, transfigurate this person 
or this situation. Also, what is interesting about uh, light, light it wakes up dead person. Wakes up. And this is very important. We as the Christians, it's not just about my lifestyle to watch myself to be clean. It's much more responsibility when I supposed to not just to be light for myself with my behavior, my kind of light supposed to change situations and people around me. So how it possible? How it possible to be this kind of person? And today I want to discuss about this because after he explained this great idea about light, Paul gave us very strict instruction or image of what does it mean to be Christian? What does it mean to be light practically daily? And the name of it, today's sermon is Wise Life. How to live wisely. I want to read with you. So it was my intro. <laughs> I want to read with you Ephesians chapter 5, starting verse 15. So please open with me. And sound of pages is the, precious, the most precious sound for the preacher. Like, shik, 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 and there is silence. Okay. So let's read this uh, all together. I mean, I will read. Look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always of, uh, and for everything to God the Father in the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Amen. At least there are some amens. Amen. This is the word of God. Okay, guys, so I want to be more involved. Uh, so I'll try to do this as well. So I just want to mention four characteristics of wise life. How you need to live or how you need to walk in your life to be wise. How you need to behave to establish wise, influential life for people around you. So principle number one. It's verse 15. Look careful then how you walk. You know, it's a very interesting uh, phrase uh, or statement Paul made here. Like if to be exact from Greek, it uh, uh, translates like watch around. Watch your steps around. Be careful with the, uh, uh, with the place you put your foot, your feet. Be careful, watch around and be careful with the place you put your feet. Because it's very important foundation, the way you stand, the, uh, the, the way, uh, the, the stability of your standing is uh, like uh, very important for your practical life. Well, what, I, uh, uh, what does it mean? So swamp, I, I want to give you this example with swamp. I don't know if you uh, any time like saw a real swamp not this pond you know on the ramps or behind the apartment there are some uh, uh, ponds uh, and people think it's uh, it's swamp it's not swamp it's just like dirt butter and maybe some garbage and sometimes there's ducks it's not a swamp swamp guys is beautiful i saw swamp so i don't know if he was in siberia on uh, or alaska like a few weeks ago i was in alaska but it was winter but still there are some swamps they're beautiful there's a lot of grass, and they're very, like, you know, like, uh, flat. There's no bad smell or something. It's like there's flowers, dragonflies, like, uh, like uh, birds singing. It's very romantic. I promise you, I saw it's very romantic. There's small, you know, like, uh, uh, some, somewhere there is water, not deep water, clean water. And you don't know this is swamp till you step in. Very next moment, you endured by your ears. I praise God it never happened with me. It was just like by my knees. But still, it's not something good. And it takes a lot of effort to, to, 
came out from this uh, from this dirt you, you, usually you need like some help from other people to go, go uh, come out from this uh, situation that's why when you go through the swamp you need like stick big stick you you, you go like this okay okay here it's a little bit better you stand here now you like you you do like this okay here you stand here and it's very slow but this is the only way you can you can go through the swamp the only way you can go through you need pretty good soil under your feet and this is uh, i think uh, this is this image i have in my mind when i read this phrase uh, look carefully then how you walk and this is my question what is your foundation for your life what you stand on because paul said the uh, uh, the characteristic of wise man is a man who watch carefully watch around and check the soil check the ground under his feet and uh, talking about modern days the ground for my feet the ground for my life is information information so i want to like change my question what information you stand on because the biggest weapon today it's not guns it's not 50 caliber makes this kind of holes it's information and information could be swamp for you you think it's something good and you build your life you build your principles you build uh, like your lifestyle you build your emotions on this kind of foundation but it's not something good you can sink and it will suck you the only good foundation stable foundation for your life is God's word nothing else so when Paul said watch your step carefully watch your steps where you stand on he talks about God's word Jesus uh, when he finished his sermon on the mount the final parable he used it, it, it was about the house built on the rock he said those who listen my words and live according to my words everybody who fulfills my words in his life he's like a house built on good solid rock and there is no fear of uh, rain or a flood or storm anything this house doesn't care because there is very good foundation foundation is very important and i build my foundation through the time I spend in something maybe it's in use maybe it's TV show maybe it's something else but this what like shapes me what kind of information I receive and you know it's my choice what I will listen what I will I, I will be filled with do you know why in use like touch much more emotions inside of me than God's word do you know why did you notice you can read Bible with zero emotion this is the, the only emotion you have you want to fall asleep but when you read this news like a crazy like what happened there what there are I need to rock I you shut up you're stupid the day the day like and we spend a lot of time arguing with each other online and read all this news there's a lot of emotion all specter of emotions you know why because these news are your foundation I'll prove this very easy when you stand on something and it start shakes it's raised some emotions fear anger sadness disappointment guys your emotions shows what what foundation you stand you stand on because if God's word is your foundation this is what will call out your emotions this is what will touch your heart and your feelings so if there is zero emotion when you read your Bible it's not your foundation 
And if there is a lot of emotions when you read news or watch news, this is your foundation. Paul said, be careful. Watch your steps. Where you put your feet. Be careful with this. It will shape your life. It can suck you. Or it can help you build your life on Jesus Christ. Second characteristic or second sign of a wise life. It's verse 16. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. And I don't know why immediately I remember what Jesus Christ said. That Satan came to steal, to destroy and to kill. What is interesting in Greek, this word uh, uh, um, making the best use, like literally it translates how, like to buy time. Buy back your time. I think it's very powerful, guys. Like it's 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 powerful. We this crazy world built to steal my time. And Paul said, you need to make effort. You need to discipline yourself to make your time free for right stuff in your life. Because when you hear, it's just like few scrolls, and three hours disappears. It's time machine. He said, you need to be wise. You need to watch how you spend your time. And it's your effort. It's not something happens automatically. You need to build your schedule. And if you understand, I need to build good, solid foundation for my life. I need to wake up not 7, I need to wake up 6. But if I want to wake up 6 a.m., I need to go to bed at 10 p.m. But if I want to go to bed to 10, uh, at 10 p.m., I need to stop watching something stupid. Yes. <laughs> I want to turn off TV. I need to turn off my phone. I need to make effort. I need to discipline myself to buy time from this world. You know what is uh, like very, uh, I already shared this once. It's good. <laughs> uh, so what the, uh, the, the characteristic of the, uh, to, to steal something. You didn't know it's stolen from you. Till the moment you need it. For example, you are at marketplace, like, uh, like how it calls in the Seattle. Uh, yeah, like Pike Place Market, right. So you go there and you have some money in your, like, I, maybe it's not like too fat, but still there's enough, like for tomatoes, for example. You go there and you go through, like there's a lot of people, big crowd, and it's already was stolen, but you don't know. You notice when you came, you found this, for example, tomatoes, and you want to buy them, and you discovered there is nothing. Satan don't want to take your time from you. He wants to steal time from you. He want to make that this that way. You didn't notice. You you already have no time. And when situations happen. You think, oh, now I need to time for this. I need to prepare. I need to do this. But there is no time because it's already stolen from you. That's why he said, watch yourself. Watch your steps and then make effort. Make best use of your time. Buy this time from your pleasure to spend time with your kids. Say no with your time for something stupid to do something wise. It's your discipline. It's your choice. And if you want to have a wise life, you make effort. You make your best to save time for right stuff. Third principle we can find in this text. Paul talks about... Uh, when he talks about wise life, it's verse 16. Uh, no, no, verse 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, this is the answer. Why do I need to make free time for myself? Why do I need this time? 
just to sleep no you need time you need to free time you need to buy time to have enough of it to spend it to know what God's will is for your life and I like how he'll write this like the way he write this therefore do not be foolish you know this word foolish like translates like uh, without feelings without reaction when God says something but there is no reaction inside of you when God does something in your, in your life but there is no reflection you just like dead there is no feelings and this kind of life you have when you practice sin in your life did you notice when you have some sin in your life you start to do you start doing something and after you done this for first time man your conscience just killing you like oh, you're ready to like to be in fire like you feel like your ears like oh. after second time you like you well uh, but it's after third time like i want to do it more zero feelings zero conscious this word foolish here there's just two choices or you just feeling less i don't know it's right to say to god or you full with desire to know god's will for your life paul said watch your steps have like solid ground under your feet buy time make free time why to know God's will for you do not be foolish not be stupid like spend your time to know God's will for your life do you know that God has a will for your reaction on other people your reaction on different situations and you need time to prepare yourself to know God's will to practice your uh, uh, his will so when the situation comes you have right reaction and you know this war in Ukraine did nothing but just revealed what we filled with inside because I react with what I feel e e e uh, with so if there is like great apple Italian soda so that I can shake as much as I want there is no bananas guys I can please I can pray I can like just like abracadabra there is no bananas there's Italian soda same thing with my life if I have stupid lifestyle when came difficulties to my life I cannot expect the right reaction it's obvious it's very simple God's word it's like so simple even kids can understand this when I have good results you need to have good process principle number four it's something good verse 18 and do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but be filled with the spirit you know guys it's very interesting because we like to walk under influence of something what makes us feel good am i right may i have your amen <laughs> we like stuff makes us good feel good you know I used to work on construction I like uh, finish not finish carpet like hardwood hardwood and uh, every day you have like problem pain with your back now I am pastor and I have pain in my neck <laughs> I don't know why maybe because of stress of all these things but sometimes you come home uh, like with a huge pain here like and you need like good therapist good chiropractor or good like massagist you know like with professional massage for and uh, sometimes you go and uh, uh, like he works on your uh, back like for 40 minutes uh, and you feel like so horrible like, there's a lot of pain you came to release this pain but you got more pain like next next day it's like red it's like dark red your but it just shapes your spinal it's work with your muscles and the time you feels not just better you feels you feel right but also you come home and there's your lovely wife and he's just like hey can you give me a massage for my neck and she's not professional but he has like these lovely hands you know like and she, she starts just like like this 
self-touches, and they just fall asleep. You feel good, you feel good, and you fall asleep, and then you wake up next morning. Guess what? Pain's still there. So I want to repeat this. We like stuff make us feel good, but we don't like stuff make us feel right. And this verse is about do not do stuff makes you feel good. Do stuff makes you feel right. This is the only way to build the right life, wise life. It's not just about wine. In modern days, we have much more stuff. You came home and there's pain or there's suffer. Or I don't know, some anger in your heart. Like, you know, this phrase, I'll try to translate. So, if you, uh, if you feel horrible after 50, take another 50. You got it? So, Russian sounds better. Like, <laughs> you got it, right? But it's wrong. And we do so. It's not about wine. It could be uh, like computer games. It could be porn. It could be like social media. It could be movie. I don't care what it is. And nothing wrong to feel, uh, with the thing to feel you good. Wrong is when you replace good with the right, I mean, when you replace right with good. Because final goal is not to feel your good. Final goal is to feel yourself right. This is why Paul said, do not be drunk. Do not get drunk. Just feel good under influence of wine or something else. But be under influence of the Holy Spirit. He will make you right. Feel right. Walk right. Behave right. Talk right. Not just to scream on somebody with anger like, who finally like, like shut up. And, no. He will make you feel right. Not comfortable. And maybe at the, at the end of this con uh, conversation, he will feel better than you are. But you're right. Period. This is the final goal. So uh, I just want to show you that this is not just about wine. And I, 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 I just want to give you an example of modern wine, okay? Uh, it's from book of Revelation. Oh, it's right here. Chapter 18. This is the angel's viewpoint of modern wine. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons. A hound for every unclean spirit, a hound for every unclean bird, a hound for every unclean and det detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the uh, mer uh, merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. And if you will continue with this uh, chapter, you will discover the modern wine of this sinful lifestyle and everything from Babylon is information. This is the true sinful wine today. And we drink this wine because it makes us feel comfortable. And we drink only what makes us comfortable. If I like Ukrainian news, I read only them, not Russians. If I like information that there is Russian tanks was destroyed, I read Ukrainians. If I like that there is Ukrainian tanks was destroyed, but not Russian, I read Russian news. If I like CNN, I, li I watch CNN. If I don't like, I watch uh, Fox News because that people makes me more comfortable with my life views and everything else. And we drink this wine, what makes us comfortable and we neglect the true wine of God true living water what make us sometimes not comfortable very often very uncomfortable but right and this is the goal to be right to be right to be able to be salt and 
light for this world. So four signs of wise lifestyle. Watch your step, carefully watch what is your foundation, what is the ground under your feet. Make time, buy time to spend it in the knowledge of God's will and walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. This is the goal. And you know, only when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you can uh, do this stuff we can find in... Uh, uh, no, it's not here. Yeah. Uh, stuff we can find in verses 19 to 21. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So here it's one, uh, like to one another, but uh, I just want promise one more time that's it like in Greek is like addressing to yourself addressing to yourself not to other people but to yourself hymns and like sermons through these hymns in guys it's important to have good playlist you know there is just two places when I uh, where I sing it's uh, service because here is music music is loud and my car when I there is alone <laughs> nobody can hear how I sing <laughs> because it's just joyful noise nothing else but I do this because there is command if you want to be fulfilled with the Holy Spirit if you want to walk under influence of the Holy Spirit you need to sing songs to yourself Teach yourself through these songs. You know, sometimes it's very hard to remember, to memorize word, but you can memorize this word. You can memorize God's character, principle of God through the songs. And I like this last song we, we sang together. It's beautiful to know and confess and proclaim. Shape yourself with this song. Second, only person under the influence of the Holy Spirit can worship God can worship God through this song only this kind of person can, can can be thankful to God and fourth can build right relationship because this verse 21 submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ sometimes people say ah you see it's not just about husband like, not about uh, wives only like to submit themselves to their husbands like husbands it's your responsibility as well like to one another right so we can gonna uh, go on like children or parents you need to obey your children right because one another so it's not the uh, the meaning of this verse the meaning of this verse is next Submit yourself to each other in roles God gave to you. Wives, submit to God through submitting yourself to your husband. Husbands, submit yourself to God through loving your wives. Children, submit yourself to God through obedience and respect and honor your parents parents obey god or submit yourself to god through right behaving uh, behaving right your children and what is uh, 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 why i stuck here uh, why i want to spend time here because i just want to say this you cannot be filled with the spirit without or aside from your relationship with people around you your family children wife husband your like, co-workers friends anybody around you you cannot be filled with the holy spirit you cannot walk in the spirit and have wrong relationship because part of this process to be filled with the holy spirit is right behavior right relationship we need to pay attention and now i want to come back to the phrase i started with my sermon it's very important how I build my life because my life style have has influence not just on me but on the society around us as the light it's not just about me it's about my influence as a light for people around as a salt it's not just my preservation of my life it's about to preserve this world falling apart from sin 
That's why wise life, it's not just about me. It's not just about shape myself, stay on solid ground. It's not just about my time and knowing the will of God for myself. It's about at the end, have right relationship with this world, with each other and with this world. Because we, at the Spring of Life Church, exist to glorify God for the glory of God. And we glorify God by making disciples through word, worship, and fellowship. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that you are Heavenly Father, that we are your kids and we saved through Jesus Christ. More of this, we are your church, we are your body, and you called us to be light and salt for this world. God, I pray for each person in this room. Bless all of us to live wise lives, watching our steps, watching our time, watching our will according to your will, and watching influence we are under. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.